Once looked down upon by your serious movie stars, the power and prestige of television these days means that A-listers are lining up around the block to appear on the small screen. Moreover, every Star Trek episode of the Kurtzman era feels like, in order to get the full experience, you should really be sitting in a large darkened room with complete strangers whilst covered in popcorn. The cinematic scope of the contemporary Trek series might well prove irresistible to the actors on this list. For this list, we'll be focusing on actors who, through no fault of their own, have not yet been in Star Trek, but who really, really need to be. A big thank you to Andrew Hyde for reaching out on Instagram with the original idea for this list. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, here with 10 actors who should be in Star Trek. Number 10, Anya Chalotra. Anya Talotra is a relative newcomer to the acting world, but she has certainly proved her might as Yennefer in Netflix's The Witcher, which quickly became one of the most watched series on the platform. Given the subtleties of her performance in The Witcher, we have previously recast Chalotra as the ever-stoic but bubbling mass of Vulcan emotions beneath the surface to pole in a Star Trek Enterprise reboot. However, the talented British actress is now set to star in a very different role that should make her an ideal fit for another arm of the Trek franchise. Already in production, Chalotra will be voicing a character in the animated series New Gen, based on the Marvel comic book series. Set in a utopian future, where nanotech is commonplace, the series will be aimed primarily at young children. Hashtag save Star Trek Prodigy. Assuming that all goes well and that Prodigy finds a new home, Chalotra could join up with Janeway and her warrant officers in training as an entirely new character from anywhere in the galaxy. Or she could even lend her voice to Lower Decks. Number 9. Dominique Tipper Listed by IMDb as one of their kick-ass women of sci-fi alongside Star Trek alum Nichelle Nichols, Kate Mulgrew, Jerry Ryan, Celia Rose Gooding, Rebecca Romaine, and more, British actress Dominique Tipper made her name in the role of battle-ready belter with a heart of gold Naomi Nagata in Amazon Prime Video's The Expanse. Naomi is certainly one of the most likeable characters on the show, but my oh my is she made to suffer, both physically and emotionally. Hopefully on Star Trek, Tipper can have a calmer journey through the galaxy. The Expanse was also noted for its use of Belter Creole, and for the intricate code switching employed by Naomi depending on whether she was around Inners or Belters. Such an ease with language and the diversity that brings to the screen would make Tipper an excellent choice for Trek, a series in which the dialogue is by and large still given in the somewhat euphemistically named Federation standard. Number 8. Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage is another Hollywood A-lister to have claimed his Trekkie credentials of late, and we think it's about time he was given a role in the show. I mean, his last name is literally Cage, for Pike's sake. I mean, technically it's actually not, but whatever. Much to the chagrin of Pedro Pascal, Cage told Yahoo that he wasn't down for joining Star Wars as his unbearable weight of massive talent co-star might have hoped. Cage was firmly in the Star Trek family. Commenting on Cage's I'm a Trekkie reveal, Anson Mount retweeted the Yahoo interview to Akiva Goldsman saying, Must. Make. This. Happen. To which the Star Trek showrunner executive producer simply replied, Aye aye, Cap. Now it's a bit late for Strange New World Season 2 by now, but perhaps next season Cage could play Jonathan Archer Dawes, an enterprising Starfleet historian in search of lost galactic treasures, the map to which is written on the back of a Federation charter. But more seriously though, Cage would make just as good a Cardassian as he would a Starfleet captain. The possibilities are endless. Someone might want to check nonetheless if bees are still about by the 23rd century. Number 7. Lawrence Fishburne Lawrence Fishburne is a multi-talented, award-winning actor with films and TV series under his belt as diverse as Apocalypse Now, The Colour Purple, CSI, and Hannibal. His stint as Morpheus in The Matrix also makes him a veritable sci-fi legend. So convinced, in fact, are people that Fishburne is Morpheus, the actor jokingly once stated that he considered carrying around red and blue M&Ms to blow people's minds. This time, let's take both pills and slide down the rabbit hole into Trek Wonderland. Fishburne has an intriguing link to Star Trek, albeit a very tenuous one. In 1997, the actor played another ship's captain, Miller, in now cult sci-fi horror classic Event Horizon. With Fishburne's star power and sci-fi captaincy previous, he'd be perfect for a leadership role in Star Trek, although he's surely earned the Admiral pips and stripes by now. Number 6. Mila Kunis one of her most famous characters, Meg, might well have good reason to hate the show after contracting the mumps from a fan at a convention, but Mila Kunis, much like Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane, clearly loves Star Trek, 
often citing The Next Generation as her favourite. When the actress appeared on the penultimate The Late Late Show with James Corden earlier this year, she could barely contain her excitement to be sitting next to a certain Patrick Stewart. Trying to play it cool, Kunis admitted that back in the days of those classic Nokia phones, she bought a ringtone that went Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Although she would gladly play Deanna Troy as Marina Sirtis once suggested, Kunis has expressed some hesitancy when asked about joining the franchise. Watching Star Trek with the fourth wall firmly in place is for her more fun than being a part of it. We certainly wouldn't want to take any of that enjoyment away. Neela really should be in Star Trek. We definitely know she has the voiceover chops for a role in Lower Decks or even Prodigy. Number 5. Adrian Dunbar Adrian Dunbar needs to be in Star Trek. The Northern Ireland-born actor has enjoyed a prolific career on stage, screen and behind the camera for over four decades. No stranger to a sci-fi franchise or two, Dunbar starred in the BBC's 2005 live broadcast film remake of 1950s sci-fi series The Quatermass Experiment. He even played a role in Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace, but his scenes were cut from the theatrical release. Dunbar is no doubt most well known though for his role as Head of Police Anti-Corruption Unit 12 in the hugely popular Line of Duty. AC-12's no-nonsense SI would certainly have fit right in, chasing alien OCGs in STTNG, DS9, VOY and ENT. But these days, we could see the gaffer actor as an admiral, or at least a captain, in SNW. Mother of God, just give Adrian Dunbar his own long trek, in fact. Number 4. Stephen Graham one of the finest, most sought-after actors of his generation, Stephen Graham is equally at home in big-budget Hollywood with DiCaprio and De Niro as he is in an intimate BBC drama. Known for playing criminals, or at least the multifaceted wrong'un type, in films and series such as Gangs of New York, The Irishman, This Is England, and The Odd Guy Ritchie work, the Merseyside native is a master of accents and recently showed off his keen comedic timing and culinary skills in Roald Dahl's Matilda the Musical and Boiling Point, respectively. Not to typecast, but if it's complex, morally ambiguous, undercover operatives you're after, Star Trek has a few organisations for that. Section 31 might be the obvious choice, but why not a Romulan Tal Shiar agent, or a long trek about the Orion Syndicate? Graham could equally play an operative or head of the Department of Temporal Investigations, now that the time travel police are getting some more attention in Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Our very own Sean Ferrick also cast Graham as Rom in a Star Trek Deep Space Nine reboot, so for fear of going back to coffee duty, I must say that is absolutely the only and most magnificent choice. Number 3. Hannah Waddingham Now anyone who follows me personally on social media won't find it difficult to guess who made this suggestion for this list. From a family of opera singers, Waddingham is an accomplished West End performer in her own right, having starred in shows such as Spamalot and The Wizard of Oz. Of course, Waddingham rocketed to global fame with the role of Rebecca Welton in the much lauded Ted Lasso. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I made the suggestion for Hannah Waddingham on this list, and the character of Rebecca Welton fits the mould of my favourite characters in anything I watch. Now, my favourite Star Trek character, again, if you're not aware, is Captain Janeway. There are some real parallels between those two characters. Now, of course, they are also very different characters, but the fundamentals are the same. But in Star Trek, whilst it would be great to see Waddingham as an admiral or a captain, she would be the perfect Romulan badass villain. And the basis for that conclusion comes from her superbly villainous role as Magdalena in the third season of Twelve Monkeys, where she became good friends with Terry Metalis and Todd Stashwick, so a Star Trek role for Waddingham seems practically predestined at this point. Number 2. Lena Headey Lena Headey and the previous ray of sunshine on this list, Hannah Waddingham, became fast friends on the set of Game of Thrones, in spite of, or even in part owing to, the challenges of that waterboarding scene and the naked walk of shame. It would be an utter delight to see the pair reunite on screen in Star Trek, either as opposing forces once more, or as colleagues, chums in Starfleet or elsewhere. Evidently at home with fantasy, science fiction is also familiar territory for Heedy. The English actress played the titular Sarah in the woefully cut short series Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles, 
and Mama in 2012's Dread. Hedy could happily catch up, nay, surpass her Terminator co-star and Star Trek stalwart Thomas Decker, who has previously had roles in Star Trek Generations, Star Trek Voyager, and in Star Trek Picard. In fact, Hedy has already been cast, so to speak, as half-Vulcan, half-human captain to Sarah Frost in the Star Trek Courageous fan universe, set just after the end of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and before Star Trek Nemesis. Number 1. James McAvoy What do goat legs and that bloody hell it's hot in here gif have in common with Captain Picard? James McAvoy, of course. The internationally renowned Glaswegian actor has taken on a host of characters in his career, but most notably for our purposes, he played a young Professor Charles X Xavier. McAvoy not only has precedent then to play a younger version of Picard, but he's practically been canvassing for the role for a good while now. A proud geek through and through, McAvoy is an avid Star Trek fan, telling GQ of his admiration for Stewart's work in The Next Generation. Asked by Jimmy Fallon in a 2020 interview if he'd like to take on the Picard role, McAvoy replied, I'm doing the virtual lockdown equivalent of rubbing my scent all over Patrick's face and saying this territory is mine. If you haven't seen McAvoy's lockdown sci-fi salation Star Trek parody homage, then do yourself a favour. The utterly hilarious, quite literally made on a shoestring at times, Star Force stars McAvoy as the captain, Katrina Balfe as second in command, and has guest actors the likes of Florence Pugh, Kit Harrington, and Sam Hewen. Give them all their own Trek series, I say, and see what happens. And that concludes our list. Let us know which actors you'd like to see in Star Trek in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell so you never miss a Trek culture video ever again. Also, head over to Twitter and Instagram to follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.